the first time it's uh, it's kind of popped up. But I think Bob Raffin pointed out that it happened once to him in college or something like that. It's not it's not the first time it's ever happened. <laughs> Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to the show that's cool and fly to A1 Forever Sports. I am he, Chris Tip Moore. Why set a flesh where you can have more with the vision? And with that in mind, I'd like to bring on a special guest today to talk Atlanta Hawks with me. Uh, looks like he is ready. So I'm about to bring him in. Brad Rowland, Locked On Hawks podcast. Excuse me, Locked On Hawks podcast. Brad Rowland, thank you for coming back to the show. Second time on. How you been doing? I'm good. I appreciate you having me. Uh, it's always busy around the Hawks, but uh, that time exactly. of year. <laughs> Thank you again. Okay, so, uh, of course, the Hawks, you know, snapped their two-game losing streak against the Thunder. Thunder came in winning eight of the last 11 games. You know, four of those was at home. So, that four-game home win streak was snapped. But I want to know, Hawks were without DeAndre Hunter for the second time in a row, of course. Have you heard any news at all about Drake? Uh, no, is the short answer. Uh, I know the broadcast talked about it um, during the Oklahoma City game that you know he's had asthma his whole life, and um, right. they you know he's been he's obviously been getting checked. And I knew he had asthma before this. This is the first time it's uh, it's kind of popped up. But I think Bob Raffin pointed out that it happened once to him in college or something like that. It's not it's not the first time it's ever happened. Um, but the Hawks were off on Thursday, and as we're talking here on Friday, they have not practiced since they got back from Oklahoma City. So. That'll be the first time that we get kind of any update at all about DeAndre. Hopefully it's good news and he's available to play on Saturday. But uh, it's one of those things that's like tough because it's not like an ankle injury where you can just like kind of see what happened. You know, it's asthma. So it's, it's kind of a tough one. But I think uh, everybody's hoping that he's uh, ready to rock on Saturday. Well, I think just the entire sports world is going to be kind of more cautious, especially, you know, of course, you know what happened with DeMar Hamlin in, in the NFL. So I just feel like just as far as just – respiratory and just everything they want to just make sure DeAndre is fine. And that's, you know, perfectly fine with me as well. Okay. So Clippers come into town. You just said Saturday night winners of their last four, including a 38 point beat down of the Spurs. Uh, pretty much. What are your keys to ending this four game win streak and also taking a season sweep? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see like what the Clippers look like. Cause the secret about Clippers is that when they have their guys, they're pretty good. You know, when Kawhi plays, they're like 16 and nine or 17 and nine this season. Uh, right. Just that he's not, he's not playing back-to-backs. This is a back-to-back -back for the Clippers, but it's also the first night of a back-to-back. -back. So I kind of assume that they're going to bring their guys to Atlanta. And when the Clippers are right, they're just a tough team to play against because they're just different. Like, they don't have necessarily a dominant point guard. It's kind of about, um, you know, the defense is really good for the Clippers. They're versatile and they're pretty big across the board. So it's more of a, an offensive challenge for the Hawks, even though the Hawks have been playing better on offense the last couple of weeks. But the Clippers are a team that can be like kind of crowding you. They're, they're pretty like, you know, on the wing. They, they can switch a lot of stuff, which kind of bothers the Hawks at times. They don't, they don't really foul. Um, so I think it really will be, of course, containing Kawhi and Paul George. That's very, very important, especially if DeAndre Hunter does not play. But even if he does, if he does play, it's very helpful. But mm -hmm. But the bigger challenge is on offense against the Clippers, generally speaking. They're, uh, the Clippers' offense has not been great this year, even when they had their guys, that they're really, really solid on defense. Right, right. Well, I know last game, you know, two things that really stood out to me was, you know, the Hawks' free throw shooting. They did get up a lot of attempts against the Clippers last time. And also mm -hmm. the rebounding. So I believe those two things would definitely have to factor in because I know Kawhi and Paul lately have been playing together. And Kawhi's been actually looking like he's trying to gain into form. So – We'll see what that happens with that. Hopefully the Hawks, you know, pick up another big win. They definitely need it. And going forward, my next question for you is, man, what's going on, man? Some people are uh, saying some crazy things about Trey. <laughs> like Trey's star is fading. And just because his numbers are down, he's being inefficient. Do you think Trey is regressing? I don't, but what do you think? No, I wouldn't say that. I think that it's fair to say that Trey has not been as good this year as he was last year. Um, but yeah. that's not to say that that's not that's not to say that Trey is not still great. Like if you look at the underlying numbers in particular, when the way he drives the offense, like you know when when he's on the floor, they're still good offensively this year. When he's off the floor, not so good. 
Mm -mm, uh, nah. And his, I, and I think you can sort of track his his counting stats, and uh, he's just not making it. He's not shooting the ball as well this year as he was in, in previous seasons. But I think it's it's still it's a half season sample size. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I know some of the all star you know uh, starter voting people are kind of worried about that and him being lower on that. You know, I think at the end of the day, he's he's the same guy he's been. He's not having the best season, but that, that happens sometimes. And I think he's still a, a, a dynamic and awesome offensive player. I think defensively the last few weeks, he's actually been kind of notably better to me. If you watch yeah. him play and play out, he's been scrapping more. He's never going to be great defensively. It's just the reality of the situation, but he's been better. He's been pulling his weight defensively. So, yeah, as far as like him – being less popular or whatever. I think I will say be, maybe it's because of the losing or maybe some of the reporting that's been out there about, you know, him and Nate or whatever. But I think that the that Hawks fans, like you kind of alluded to there, have complained more about Trey this year than in previous years. And maybe it's just because he's not making as many shots. That, that might be as simple as that. But as far as like what he actually is as a player, I don't think he's regret. I think, I think he's the same guy he's been before. He's, he has weaknesses for sure, but he's still an awesome superstar player. And that, ha that hasn't changed. Right. That's absolutely correct, man. Like, I don't think he's regressing at all. I mean, you did go get DeJounte Murray, who's also, you know, a ball dominant person. So it's just, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, come on, his numbers got to go down because you have to distribute the ball. But hey, what do I know? All right. So the Hawks, they have committed uh, 10 of their 16 turnovers in that second half, man. Atlanta, they have to clean these turnovers up because it's like in the last three games, 50 turnovers to 32. So what is the key to really getting down these turnovers, man? What's going on? Did, did midnight strike on us or what? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because the Hawks the last two years, as I'm sure you know, like that's been one of their best things. They're awesome at taking care of the ball. They've been top three in the league in the last two seasons and not turning it over. And, right. I, you know, the, one of the reasons why they've been in trouble the last few games is – the turnovers like in particular that charlotte game they just couldn't take care of the ball and then the, the the chicago game they couldn't make shots either and that kind of you know did both things so i don't think it's anything different i think that this is still a team that fundamentally takes care of the ball at a high level but i think maybe they're trying to press a little bit maybe just a small sample size kind of thing um they've been playing a little bit um faster which is probably good but it also that also may may lead, may lead to a little bit higher turnover rate because you're trying to play you're trying to push intentionally so it's a little bit of everything, but I still think this is a team that if you look at the underlying stuff, like they're still a top five team in turnover rate on offense. That should be where they are. But right. like you kind of said, because they're built that way, they have to actually do that because if they're, they're built to be really good, take care of the ball. So if they don't take care of the ball, it gets magnified because they're not good in transition defense. If you turn the ball over, it leads to layups and that kind of messes you up all over the place. So mm -hmm. there's a reason why, yeah, Nate, Nate always preaches that too. Like obviously coaches all say they don't want to turn the ball over. But he really, really, really drives that. And I think there's a reason for it because if they start turning the ball over, it messes everything else up. Correct, correct, man. I completely agree. Completely agree. A uh, good note, though, you know, the Hawks have went from 29th to 23rd on their three-point shooting. <laughs> yeah, they're like number one in the league in the last, I think it's like 10 games from three. Now, they're not taking a ton of them still. They're still pretty yeah, low yeah, in the, yeah. the attempts, but they're, uh, they're making – and look, this is not a great shooting team. They right. have some good shooters on the team. But I think um, they were not as bad as it was early in the season. Like, they, they shouldn't be, you know, 29th or 30th or whatever they were. For more. They, they should probably be more in the middle. And that maybe this is just some positive regression. But, that you know, DeJounte making a bunch of shots over about a two-week span really helped. Trey's been better from three recently. So, yeah, they're not great still, but it's uh, not 29th anymore. Right, right. Well, last question for you. Are the Hawks legit buyers? Sellers at the deadline, will John Collins, Bogey, or both be moved? Yeah, it's the uh, million-dollar question for sure. I think that they're not going to sell, I don't think. I think the only way that you could say the Hawks maybe, quote-unquote, sell is in a Collins trade. I think I've said this a million times, but I think if they, if they end up trading John, it probably makes them worse in the short term. Um, yes. that's part of that's because I'm, I'm pretty high on John, but I think that I've yet to see a deal for Collins that makes them better than I think is realistic, which is kind of the problem with trading John in the first place. He's a difficult guy to move. Um, right. as far the as contract. buying, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a terrible contract, but it's not a cheap contract either. You know what I mean? I think he's like oh. appropriately paid for what he is. And that makes life, you know, you, it's a lot easier to trade guys who are overpaid or underpaid because then everybody kind of agrees of what they are. Collins is just right. like appropriately paid, which is fine. Um, so 
I don't know. As far as buying, they're going to try to buy. I think they aren't going to go like all in, if I had to guess. I think they might try to do some on the margins. You know, you mentioned Collins and Bogey. Those are their two guys who are probably the most likely to be traded. I would throw Justin Holiday in there, too, because he's kind of their one like mid salary that if they don't want to tinker with their team too much, they could trade Justin in, in like one pick for another like depth guy because he's making like six and a half million dollars. It's like a decent amount of money to right. go ahead and match salary. So um, I would look for something like that as probably the more likely thing to happen. But look, John's been available for a long time. They could move him for sure. Bogey right. is interesting. He's got the player option for next year. Um, I don't know what he's thinking about that deal right now. So uh, those are the three guys to circle. And I think they're closer to buying than selling, but I'm not expecting like another like massive trade or anything like that. Right. Neither, neither. Me, me personally, I don't think uh, John is going anywhere. I mean, I'm pretty high on John myself. I don't think he's going anywhere just because you you haven't found the trade partner. You might should have had traded him in the offseason if you was going <laughs> like that, you know. Yeah. Personally. But, you know, that yeah. that's being said, too. Uh, one of my subscribers, man, they threw a trade scenario at me. Uh, let me see, uh, let me know. If this is far fetched. All okay, right. So Hawks, Pacers, TJ McConnell, Buddy Hill, Miles Turner, John Collins. Justin Holiday, bogey. Hmm. I mean, it's probably not going to happen because that's just the way these deals work. But it's not crazy. I mean, the only the only thing there would be having Turner, Capella, and a Kongu all on the team at once would right. be challenging. Just because, like, I don't know what you do there. Like Turner can play a, like a, I think Turner and a Kongu could play together. Honestly, that yeah. might that actually would play. But yeah, Turner and Capella probably can't play together realistically, um, which is challenging. Um, I sort of like overall value that'd be fine it's just you have to ha you kind of have to have the next trade lined up probably capella has to get moved or something like that oh, in the future. Definitely. um i don't know i haven't thought about that that, that much but i because I, I if i'm indiana i've said this before actually if i'm indiana i would want to trade for john and keep miles turner absolutely now, because i think john and miles turner fit great together um that <clears> so that's great. one of those things like i've kind of floated that as a uh, it's not been reported anywhere but i've seen a ton of but like that's a team where I'd be trying hard to get John if I was the Pacers or like the Thunder's another one. If I was Oklahoma City, I know they're like, they're like not they're kind of still rebuilding, but they're better this year. And they have Chet Holmgren. Like if I have Chet yeah. Holmgren, I'm trying to get John Collins because he fits great with Chet Holmgren. So that um, it's not a bad scenario, but I don't think that they would probably do that without another deal lined up for Capella. Host of Locked <laughs> On Hawks podcast, Brad Rowland. You know some very very. Um surgical when it comes to talking about these Atlanta Hawks. Thank you so much for coming on to the show again. Thank you so much for, you know, giving your insight and everything. And just, you know, we look forward to doing this again, uh, maybe hopefully a little sooner next time. Yeah. My apologies. That's, that's on me. Uh, my schedule is pretty crazy, but no, I appreciate you having me on and uh, always happy to do it and uh, keep, keep up the good work, man. Thank you so much, man. Hey, man, one day I just hope to be as half as busy as you. That's all. <laughs> half. Listen, there's pros and cons to being busy. I'll tell you that. It's not, it's not yeah, all bad. It's not all good either, though. So there you go. Yes, sir, man. Thank you again for coming on. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy the rest of your day, man. Let's go, Hawks. We'll see how we do, man, halfway through the season. Thanks, Chris. Yes, sir. Once again, I'd like to thank Brad Rowland, host of the Locked On Hawks podcast, for coming on to the show talking some Atlanta Hawks, previewing these Hawks versus Clippers matchup, trade deadline things. Thank you guys for watching. You know, peace and blessings to you. Be generational because it's always time to be. The show that is cool and fly to A1 Forever Sports, Chris Tip Moore. While Settle for Less, where you can have more with the vision. Peace and blessings once again to you. All be safe and I will holler. <laughs>